Welcome again. Right now we're in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Paul's great prayer. Paul says, For this cause I also, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which is among you, and the love which you have toward all the saints, don't cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. Wisdom is not knowledge. A lot of people can know a lot of things. You can have a lot of data in your mind, but not really be wise. Wisdom is known by the fruit that it produces in someone's life. Wisdom is shown in the way you live, in the decisions you make. In fact, the scripture says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A lot of people, even people that go to church, most of them don't even have a clue what the fear of the Lord really is. Let me give you a quick example. One day I was driving over a very high and very long bridge. This bridge is known to have high winds on it, and when there is a lot of high winds, then a lot of times transport trucks would actually flip over on this bridge. And this day that I was driving on it was one of those days. Actually, it said on the sign, you know, high winds, okay? It was a warning, high winds. So we were going over the bridge, and there was a transport truck right next to me, okay? There was like four or five lanes, you know, each way on this bridge. And uh, there was this transport truck right beside me, and it was swaying. It was swaying in the wind. You know, as the wind was hitting it, it was swaying. So I, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down here a little bit, and I'm going to let this thing get ahead of me at least far enough ahead of me so that if it does flip I would have time to stop and so I did I slowed down and this truck was to the right of me and I stayed a fair distance behind it and I saw it swaying and swaying and swaying and I kept my eyes on that truck all the time lest it flip on me and then it came to me this is what the fear of the Lord is Keep your eyes on the Lord, lest he flip on you. Keep your eyes on him. Always keep your eyes on him. Always have your sensors activated to make sure that you don't do anything that would cause the Lord to be upset with you. Fearing God is not being afraid of him. It is not running away from him. It actually draws you to him because you know that the worst place in the world to be is away from God. You know that the most fearsome place in the world to be is away from God. So the fear of the Lord draws you to him. But the fear of the Lord also causes you to always keep your mind on him. Always keep your eyes on him, lest he be angry with you. As the scripture says, kiss the son lest he be angry. And so the fear of the Lord is just the beginning of wisdom. So the spirit of wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, with a healthy fear of the Lord. Today in our society, we have so much teaching, so much talk about the love of God and the grace of God. Where's the fear of the Lord? We need to have a healthy balance between a fear of God and the love of God. Knowing that if you're in the right place with the Lord, you can enjoy his love. But if you step out of that sweet spot in the Lord, you could be a recipient of the wrath of God. Don't believe me? Just ask Ananias and Sapphira, whom the Lord struck dead just because of their little white lie. If that's not enough for you, Ask Herod, whom the Lord struck dead because he basically missed the beat in praising God. We need the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. In the book of Acts, we read how the fear of the Lord fell upon the church. Where does it say in the book of Acts that the love of God fell upon the church? We have lost our perspective. And then there's the spirit of revelation. It's one thing to have the knowledge of the scriptures. Even the devil does too. But it's another thing to actually have them revealed to you supernaturally. Just how Peter had the revelation of who Christ really was. 
Look at it like this, reading the Bible and having the knowledge of the scriptures without really having the spirit of revelation, making it real to you, making it part of your life, not just in your head, but in your heart, but not just in your heart, but in your lifestyle. If you just have it in your head, it's just like some code in a computer. It's like being in a room that has absolutely no light at all, not even one iota of light, completely dark complete darkness, utter and absolute darkness. You can feel the table. You can feel the wall. You can feel the carpet. You can feel the furniture. You know what's there. You've got a, a good sense of what's there. But then you feel and you find the light switch and you turn the lights on and whoa, all of a sudden you realize it's wallpaper and it's got a beautiful pattern. Look at the color in the carpet. Look at the patterns in the carpet. Look at the table. Look at the upholstery. Look at all of the things you didn't see before. You felt the book on the table before, but now you can actually read it. That's what it's like. The spirit of revelation. There are a lot of people in this world today. Yeah, they have some knowledge of the scriptures. They don't really practice it or else they would be living a holy life. They would be living a sinless and spotless life. But these people, they are like the devil. They know the scriptures, but they don't have the lifestyle. You need the spirit of revelation. And in order to get the spirit of revelation, you do have to repent. You do have to repent of your sin. Remember, Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Free from sin. Not free from God, free from sin. There are a lot of people who are not free from sin. They're bound to sin. And at the same time, they know a lot of the Bible and they can preach to people and they have their own little crazy little theologies, their, their own little ideas. But that is falsehood, a false message they believe in. It is total nonsense they believe in because they don't have the spirit of truth, because they don't have the spirit of revelation, because they have sin in their life. And that darkness is inhibiting them, stopping them from seeing the truth. It's very important to have the spirit of revelation. Paul's prayer to the saints in Ephesus is that they have the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of their hearts enlightened. The TR, the Textus Receptus Manuscripts, reads understanding instead of hearts. So it's having the eyes of your understanding enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us, who believe, not toward everybody, not toward the world, not toward the sinners, but toward the saints. Don't forget the context in which this letter is written. Paul wrote to the saints in Ephesus, toward us who believe, according to that working of the strength of his might, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and made him to sit at his right hand in the heavenly places. I remember so clearly after I really received the infilling of the Spirit of God, I could literally feel the breath of God breathing in me. And I thought this is exactly what the body, the dead body of Jesus experienced in that tomb. God's breath, God's Spirit, the same Spirit that raised him from the dead breathed in me. I could feel the life of his resurrection power. I could feel the breath of God breathing into me. And I pray to God that you feel it as well. Far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, and every name that is named. Think about all those celebrities that people just go goo goo gaga over and they idolize so much. Far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. He put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him to be head over all things for the assembly, for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. What a wonderful concept. The church of God, his people, is his body. And as always, seek him with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.